What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out what happened to the most infamous WWE fans. Now this is a follow-up video to uh, uh, a recent one we just checked out where you know we seen some of the fans get involved in matches or jump the barricade and you know try to attack people or whatever and they caught the beats. Well this is a follow-up video to those individuals catching the beats, what happened to them, are they in jail, did they learn their lesson? You know or whatnot and a few of you guys wanted me to check this out so that's what i'm here to do for you guys i'm very interested in this once again subscribe to tap out corner if you haven't already i've been subscribed we make some dope wrestling content and uh videos i think you guys should definitely check out if you haven't already let's get right into this one in this video we're going to be revealing should what be a happens good one. to most hated WWE fans and what they're doing today let's start with the fan who attacked seth rollins on monday night raw was I remember game. this. Not have a match yep. And here's the thing. They didn't have enough time to actually zoom away or cut away to something else. It just happened so randomly. Like, they didn't have enough time. Even the announcer was like, yo, what the, what the hell is going on? Obviously, I'm pretty sure they knew this is not supposed to be happening. This is not part of the show. The guy's name is Eliza Spencer. In true villain arc fashion, his story starts in 2019, two years before his literal run-in with oh Seth Rollins. My gosh. Spencer was at a meet and greet event and got to speak with the Monday Night Messiah. Eliza was an aspiring wrestler and <laughs> got the the heart, <laughs> the heart part. <laughs> asked Seth for advice. How Rollins responded was not shared, but soon after, Eliza began chatting with someone on WhatsApp who he believed was Seth Rollins. Oh, the account wow. claiming yeah. to be the WWE Superstar asked Spencer to blog for him as well as send him gift cards in exchange. Yeah, he got scammed. I remember that's what it was. He thought he was talking to Seth Rollins and he, he really wasn't. He got scammed or whatnot after he met the person, after he met Seth Rollins in real life and then I guess he assumed I don't know how you would have got his number or whatever the case is, but he definitely got scammed and he believed it a little bit too much, actually. For money, the young wrestling hopeful wanted to work his way up and did what he was told, sending about three thousand dollars in gift cards to the supposed Seth Rollins. Spencer was then given a check to reimburse him for the gift cards, but it bounced. Despite this, the reason Eliza attacked Rollins didn't have anything to do with money. Spencer claimed that he was actually trying to help Seth's opponent that night, Finn Balor. Eliza Spencer said, "My plan was to help Finn Balor. I'm a fan. I like his aura, his attitude. I like everything about his charisma. I like everything about wow. him." Of course, Eliza's plan was quickly thwarted, and he was taken into custody by the New York Police Department. After being booked, Spencer was charged with attempted assault and disrupting a live sporting event. Spencer yeah. was then released in order to appear in court at a future date. The next day, Seth Rollins would address the attack. Should they allow him back or ban him from life? No, for life? I think as a precedent, um, we should not be allowed at the event. He should be banned for life. For sure. The dude literally, Seth Rollins wasn't prepared to that. Dude speared this knee. That was a pretty crazy tackle. I'm not gonna lie to you. He full speed look like he should be playing football on the cool but he speared my man tackled him blindsided him essentially didn't even know what was going on and kind you didn't know what he was gonna do to to self so no he should not be allowed granted i do think he needs to talk to to someone professionally uh for his mental health because something's not all the right all the way there with him mentally you can tell just by some of his responses you need to talk to somebody about that but outside of that no he should not be allowed because you never know he may do it again well i mean you know i'm always open to forgiving the second chance it's not being at least Despite what Rollins said, the attacker would be allowed to attend another WWE event. Wow. In December 2021, WWE hosted a show at Madison Square Garden. Eliza Spencer took to social media to share that he was in attendance. Despite fans alerting WWE, Spencer said he enjoyed the show uninterrupted. Seth Rollins was not there, and thankfully, no incidents occurred. In the aftermath of his attack, Eliza ended up getting off very easily. Yeah, Rollins he did. Rollins was asked if he wanted to press charges, which he had every right to do. Yeah. However, Seth learned that his attacker mentally wasn't all there. Very he chose not to go after Eliza Spencer. And that's the reason why he, he's been getting somewhat of a pass here because of his mental stability. That's why. And kudos to Seth for not even, you know, going to that extreme route. But still, I don't think he should be at the show. That's just my personal opinion. 
Spencer. He was arrested by the the police that night, and and like they asked if I wanted to press charges, and um, I, you know, I didn't. I I just I asked that the that the NYPD just try to find a way to help him. I think he posted a video the next day when he like had made bail or something like that, and it was clear that he was not in a proper state. I yeah. did it for Rakishi. I did it for the Rock. Yeah, he. Yeah. Bro. I did it for all my tribal family. I yeah. kind of got what was going on. So when they started following up, I was like, "Look, I don't. This guy doesn't need to go to prison. He needs help. help. Like, he yeah, needs he needs help. help. So if there's anything, for sure. any services you guys offer for you know people in situations like this, please, you know." do that on my behalf so You're a good guy since the incident Bats. spencer appears to have kept himself out of trouble he stays active on social media under the name royal fatu judging by his post spencer appears to still be an active wrestling fan and has aspirations of becoming a wb wrestler according to his bio the now 26 year old currently works as a sales associate for macy's in new york eliza was very fortunate that he attacked yeah. thrones the fan who attacked randy orton was not yeah he's very fortunate it didn't go another way and seth didn't press charges once again i'm glad that he's doing okay and he hasn't had any outbursts like that but yeah definitely still i would keep him away from wwe events for a while i would definitely hold that permanent ban or whatnot um that's just me <laughs> jeez bro Randy Orton's attacker was a man named Tishepiso Sakabi. He got introduced to wrestling at the age of seven and quickly became a fan. When he was 16, Tishepiso stepped inside the ropes and started training to be a wrestler. He eventually performed on local shows, but his goal was to be part of WWE. The issue for Tishepiso was that he didn't know how to do that or who to talk to. That's when he had an idea. I wanted like, to show them what I can do. I didn't know who must I talk to. And then in my own mind, I thought, you know what? What if I get in there, I punch somebody, maybe from there, there will be questions like, why did you do that? And then I'll get to answer like, hey guys, I want to be part of this. He should be so had his That's, that's not the way to do it. I can, I can tell you that opportunity in 2013 when WWE was doing a tour of South Africa. The WWE hopeful quit his job in order to be at the event and once wow, he arrived he wait. waited for an opportunity. Did he say he quit his job? No way. He was doing a tour of South Africa. The WWE hopeful quit his job in order to be at the event oh, no. and once he arrived he waited for an opportunity. After Randy Orton won his match, T. Shepiso jumped over the guardrail and attacked the Apex Predator. Security quickly swarmed the ring and took T. Shepiso away. Despite the chaos, Orton managed to kick the trespasser in the, right face in the face and give him a black eye. Jeez. After being escorted from the ring, T. Shepiso was taken to the arena's security office. A camera was filming and, being a true professional, T. Shepiso stayed in character. Randy Orton said, wherever you are, man, you owe me. I'm the wrestling machine. I'm coming, Randy. I'm after the money in the fan case. I'm after she the big I'm after that. And I will get it because in everything I do in this world, I keep on shining, surviving. After that, Tishepiso went to his hotel room and, the next day, made a court appearance. He pleaded guilty to trespassing, but since Randy Orton wasn't injured, and because it was a first-time offense, Tishepiso only had to pay a fine of 500 Rand, or about 50 US dollars at the time. Damn, when asked, that's crazy. 50 dollars? Jeez. He got off of... <laughs> He got off way easier than I thought. Damn. Received a lifetime ban from WWE. Here's what T. Shippey so said. People were saying that you were banned from like WWE events forever. So is that true? Like, can you not go to a WWE event for the rest of your life? Nah, uh, -uh. that is so not true. In the aftermath, T. Shepiso continued to pursue his dream of becoming sure? a WWE wrestler and stayed active in the South African wrestling scene. A shoulder injury in 2018 put T. Shepiso on the sidelines and he'd ultimately retire. Today, at the age of 30, T. Shepiso works as a manager at a supply chain logistics company called RTT. Oh, the damn. rogue WWE fan also got engaged in 2021 okay. and has begun his own family. While T. Shepiso didn't fulfill his dream of becoming a WWE wrestler, he seems to have a happy life. This next fan- well, that's that's hey he was able to turn his life around that's good he has a family doing his own thing as long as he's not going out there to these wwe events and trying to attack people that's all that matters i love to hear that good stories like that man likely can't say the same now this guy here this clown this goof 
At the 2019 WB Hall of Fame, a 26-year-old man named Zachary Madsen attacked 61-year-old Bret Hart. This wasn't the first time Madsen had done something illegal. The Lincoln, Nebraska native had been arrested three times prior to the incident with Hart. The arrest came for stalking an MMA fighter and violating protective orders. What the it was hell? clear that Madsen had some issues, which is likely what led him to attack Bret Hart. After being swarmed by security and roughed up by some wrestlers, Zachary Madsen was taken to the New York City Police Department's 78th Precinct. He remained in jail for four days until being released on a $1,500 bond. Madsen was also hit with two assault charges and one criminal trespassing charge. Damn. On top of that, the judge also issued protective orders, which barred Zachary from going near Bret Hart, as well as a WWE security guard that the Nebraska man injured. Madsen didn't give much of a reason for why he attacked Bret Hart. All that he said was, just felt like it was the right moment. For several months, Mad I just felt like it was the right moment to randomly attack uh, a wrestling legend during his Hall of Fame speech. I I don't get it, bro. That I don't get it. Madsen's court date kept getting postponed and rescheduled until it was finally supposed to happen in September 2019. However, the attacker didn't show up, so an arrest warrant was issued. Oh Madsen boy. was eventually taken into custody and made a court appearance later in the month. After that, another hearing was set for November and Madsen was once again released. It appears this case was settled quietly. Zachary Madsen didn't appear on any sentenced prisoners lists and his court case didn't appear in any records. It's likely Madsen either reached some kind of agreement with WWE and Bret Hart or Zachary's lawyer was able to declare him mentally unstable. Unfortunately, yeah. Madsen would get into trouble again. Oh, in September no. 2021, Zachary Madsen was arrested for shoplifting in Denver, Colorado. Madsen would be released on a $1 bond and his only punishment was being restricted from the area he stole from. And That's crazy. They gave him a $1 bond? That's crazy. I didn't even know they did stuff like that. Here's a $1 bond. You might as well just let him go with a slap on the wrist. Don't do it again. A $1 bond? That's, that's wild. In fact, the fines for the court case cost him more, which came to just under $200. Since this and the Hall of Fame incident, Zachary Madsen, by all accounts, has stayed out of trouble. As of October 2023, it appears that Madsen is living with his parents in Littleton, Colorado, a suburb of Denver. It's unknown if Zachary has a job or is doing any work, but given his repeated criminal record, it would make him difficult to hire. Zachary Madsen isn't the only fan that has taken things too far. To see what these 15 other WB fans That's did- That's crazy, man. Hopefully, uh, Zachary is on the straight and narrow, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, him being with his parents, keep him on the straight and narrow because you can't be going around just tackling people and saying, oh, I just felt like that was the right moment. No, stop it. What are you doing? But comment down below. Let me know what are some other videos y'all want me to check out. Link them down below in the comment section, and I'll definitely try to check some of them out. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.